Yeah. We hear better. We we hear, but yeah, not at the level of a uh, voice in the in the. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put my face right to the mic. <laughs> 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 okay, can I have a second? So hopefully now you can see. Uh, vague outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to start just by giving you a quick introduction to small talk, which may be some of you will see through, some of you will find interesting. And then I'll get on to what this talk is actually about, which is the pragmatic small talk implementation that we now have in the file. So if I can have the next slide. The small talk family dates back to around 1967, I guess. Maybe correctly on this for the first initial thoughts on the subject. Uh, the final version of the standard was really worked out in 1980. It's the language that I guess all the new standards were developed as a familiar with because it's the language that was by the creation of the objective scene. But there are lots of other large examples that itself was uh, sorry Sal um, was a version of small talk that kept the same sort of syntax for the real classes, and it became very, uh, very simple as a language. There was really nothing much that was fixed in the behavior of language. Everything else could be added um, as part of the language. And Sal has one very popular descendant, which is JavaScript. JavaScript inherits most of the language from Sal, but it adds a number of different scummy syntax on top of that. If you really weird and more capable to behave using the other type of implementing JavaScript, some of the things in the specification make you scratch your head onto what they were spoken. Um, if I can move on to the next slide. So, in small talk, there are basically Two main bits of syntax. There's assignment, which uses this colony called ping. So you have a variable on the left, and there's some expression on the right. I guess we're all familiar with assignment in various programming languages, and that's any other program is reported in most of them. Um, and the other thing is message sending. And this is exactly like message sending in Objective C, which is not a mechanism of Objective C, so it's not a so, the only difference is there are no square brackets because the square brackets and objective C are there to distinguish between C like syntax and syntax. While it's all talk about everything is all talk about syntax. So, you have three kinds of message. You have numeric messages, which adjust the message length in the arguments, messages with more parameter, messages with multiple parameters which have a bit of this selector in between uh, each of the components. And I guess no one's confused or surprised by this syntax. No? Okay, so if we can move on to the next slide. No problem for Sorry, did someone speak? Yeah, just that we were on the flow control side. Another kind of 
there's also a command line tool, ETLC, which might make dynamic language compiler, which is a sort of compiler driver for uh, compiling and running language in different programs. And this does a few little bits of syntax like sugar, so it can strip out the uh, hash exclamation mark line at the top of the file. So you can use this uh, to run shell scripts in small talk using the uh, the new stack frameworks. And it supports loading bundles, so you can put it in a double tap bundle. It does a little bit of hacking to make the main bundle um, method for NS bundle return the bundle that was passed. And so we now have the ability to write applications purely in small talk with no need to compile them at all. You just distribute the dot app bundle, and as long as the language is in small talk and DLC are installed on the target machine. You can just double click on the workspace or open the window and that will just work. So, next slide, please. So, one of the aims for this was to try and keep it small because small is easy to debug and easy to test and easy hopefully for other people to understand. And this slide, assuming that what you see and what I see have been kept in sync, this slide should be showing you exactly how big this is. So, if I start at the bottom, the total amount of code produced uh, as part of this whole thing, so language kits for all, all the wrong types of port, is just under a thousand type of code. And from that perspective, the object of C runtime library is about 12, 12 point nine zero code. So, this all the new stuff is less code than we get in the American Digital Media Objects here. So it's kind of small. Uh, the small talk specific bit to wrap up the right now is nice code that includes a lot of
module structures that the runtime likely understands and expects to get from the code that's generated from Objective C. So there's no virtual machine, there's no bridging layer, there's no overhead of sending messages from Objective C to Smalltalk or from Smalltalk to Objective C. There's just a really small runtime layer. Uh, next slide, please. So a lot of people have asked uh, when I go to all this to us and kind of use any ever. And the reason for this is that a lot of the way it works is by using the type of selector information that the GNU runtime has, the Mode runtime has, and the Apple runtime doesn't have. So with the GNU runtime, every selector has a name and a type associated with that. And you can get this information really easily at runtime. You can uh, use all the nice introspection stuff to find out exactly what types a method expects. So in small talk, everything is an object, and that's fine. You can just pass objects around between small talk methods, and that's great. But often, when you're calling objects to feed code, then one or more of the parameters you want to pass will be an integer or structure or something like that. So all integer types are boxed as this special small int primitive in uh, language kit. And this is a sort of pseudo object which is um, it's basically an integer that stores the pointer so the least significant bit is set to one. And when you want to perform any arithmetic with it, you just right shift it one, do the arithmetic, and then shift it and <coughs> And all of those methods are implemented in very short C functions that compile to LLVM bit code. And then when you want to perform any of those operations, the compiler just generates calls to those functions and LLVM inlines them before code generation. For more complex types like structures, they're all boxed in the sub like the dynamics of the And then we use standard methods like uh, in value or rect value, point value, set to whatever the object is, uh, together as a Pass, for example, a string to someone who thinks back to an integer. Uh, Floating point when you can find a but it's not like human. And the kind of looks at it, oh, I know this is an object, so to unbox it, I send a new value message, and it do has the object of the forms, uh, as long as the object implements a new value method that returns an int, then it'll all work. So you can use strings and integers and stuff all interchangeably and automatically. Uh, next one. So there are a couple of things that were difficult about implementing small to uh, with the native compiler using the new runtime. And the first one of these is blocks. Small to uses blocks everywhere. They're first class objects and they need to be created fast because pretty much everything you do in small talk involves blocks. And the other one is non-local returns. And these are a really easy feature of small talk where if you have a return statement in a block, then when it's encountered, the method where the block was declared returns, so you need to do some stack unwinding. And I'll talk just quickly about each of those if I can have the next slide. So this little code snippet is how you perform a math operation in pragmatic small talk. This array, by the way, is an NS array. You've got certain categories on NS array which implement some of these methods. And that's what the small talks for library that I listed on the light count slide was all So this takes a block which takes one argument as its argument. And it sends it to message it sends it a value message for each um, entry in the array in turn. And then it creates a new array which takes the result of this block uh, as a translation. So, well, that's not so interesting. The problem is that when you're doing this kind of thing a lot, you need to be able to create more blocks fast. And if we have to do a heap allocation every single time this 
sweep of Mac applications, uh, the Melody application, which Eric's been working on, uh, is a music jukebox application that's more talking that the Twanic. So it uses all of the Twanic libraries for the store to play the game. It uses a Rapid Tech Lift and a Metadata for uh, individual music tracks. So that's a C library for C and MBI. This now wraps Objective C. And then all of the front end of the melody is written in Smalltalk. So a Smalltalk goes to an Objective C. So we've got a huge selection of languages all used in the same application. Uh, we can use it for scripts. So in a Twilight subversion, there's an application which recognizes gestures and it uh, does hot corner and the index. So you move the mouse into the corner and it sends a message to a standard object which is created just as a single tool. Using small tool, we can adjust that passages that standard object. And this gives us a kind of scripting in the outside new objects that could be run in existing applications. And we can modify existing applications to make that the next line. So I guess most people are familiar with the idea of categories and objective scenes. We can just define a new set of methods on an existing class and those new methods replace the existing methods from the category um, And that's great, that's useful for Objective-C programs. But because this compiler uses the same thing behind as Objective-C, it has the same capability as Objective-C. So we can write categories in support on Objective-C objects. So I said a couple of slides ago, small talk objects, objective C objects. But really there's there's no such thing as a small talk object. There are objects which have some methods in the principle of small talk. But most of these inherit an S object or some other object of small talk class. And so any one of these objects has some mixture of small talk and objective C. And we can do that now for all the new step applications. We've got a user applet bundle and it's one of the alien, which is loaded by applet. And it's shipped as part of its file. And the new versions of that do two things. They enable cross application scripting using scripting. And they also now link in uh, language. So if you have any bundles with an uh, LP plugin extension in it, it's now the location of your hardware then as soon as the application loads, it will load all of these bundles and new behavior to existing applications. They can replace it, they can fix bugs, they can do whatever you want. So next slide, please. So I guess we're all here because in some way we believe that free software is a good thing. And the Free Software Foundation defines free software by three, uh, by four reasons. And the third one of these is the freedom to improve the program, release the improvements, and modify versions in general to the public, so that the whole community benefits. And they qualify this by saying access to the source code is a precondition of this. But now, for us, access to the source code isn't a precondition of this. With language key plugins, then you don't need access to the source code to be able to extend, to modify, to replace existing behavior in an application at runtime. You can still distribute your modifications just as another language can bundle. Any user can make modifications to any of the new set application without needing to read the source code. And I can move on to the next slide. The last thing I'm going to talk about is CodeMonkey, which is an integrated development environment in the last big monkey. And we're still in a very early state yet. We won't make it into the 4.4.1 release, which we should have in the next week or two. Uh, but hopefully we will in 4.4.2. So this is the last one, which lets you look at Classes, the categories on the classes, 
before I ask the questions, a uh, few people who I should mention who have worked on this. Obviously, I have been doing some work on this. I wrote the initial uh, code generator, the object of the text tree, and a really, really bad small talk parser, which is the default repeatedly. Uh, Trust has written small talk parsers now, which actually works, which is a massive improvement. Gunther uh, has written a test suite. Nicholas has been writing the IT, and Eric's written the first two applications in Smalltalk for a time. One of them written entirely in Smalltalk has been working on the Photo Manager application, uh, which is a pure Smalltalk application. So there's no compiled code anywhere, and you don't need to make it, you just copy the app. So, questions? Any questions? What I was thinking is maybe we uh, um, uh, we uh, prepare a, a replacement talk for tomorrow and maybe uh, merge the, this one, uh, a short version of this one with the uh, A20 status talk. I just got a question. What happens with the dynamic quality of small talk if you compile it? Is it still there or will it get frozen somehow? I can't hear people who want to hear the microphone, but I should be concerned. I want to know if um, Smalltalk gets, if you compile it, if, it's get, if it gets, if, 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 if it's loaded, it's the dynamicality. Uh. Yeah, so if you, if you compile Smalltalk, what is the. Um, the impact of the on the dynamic aspects of the language? Uh, none, actually. None. The JIT uh, file code and the uh, static code are the same. All the dynamic stuff we get comes from runtime introspection. So you still have uh, message sending dynamically, you still have method replacement dynamically, you still have. Uh, do you have? Okay. Uh, you still have all the same type of information. There's nothing lost in the same thing. Uh, the only thing you lose, of course, is the source code. If you don't put the source code in the bundle, you can't plug it and expect it. Do you have it? So, one thing that I'm planning on adding very soon is the ability to create a uh, shared object file uh, from the small talk bundle when it's loaded by language for the first time. And then and as long as it hasn't changed just local object code for the last time. So we get a nice cache of that. I don't know if you have small talk questions, I can answer them uh, locally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a problem. And then maybe I will, uh, yeah, I will prepare a, a version of this talk for uh, tomorrow and try to uh, be able to uh, answer more questions uh, about it. Well. Okay, with that. Okay, thank you.